Welcome back to the vlog, another Elvis week vlog coming at you. Today is our busiest day so far. We have, what is this one that we're going to? I don't even know. The actual, so yesterday May said that our thing was with Linda Thompson, but that was a lie. This one is actually with Linda Thompson. And the $6 million man, Lee Majors, which she doesn't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Obviously, the people my age definitely will know who $6 million man is. Um, so we have that. And then this afternoon, we have... Um, Jerry Schilling. Lisa, the Lisa Marie um, talk. And then after that is the candlelight vigil. So a lot of things going on today. There are actually so many people here now before there wasn't that many people when we first arrived on Saturday, but now it's completely full. People are everywhere. From there's all over. Yeah. There's parties going on in the lobby at night. It's crazy. Yeah, um, you can definitely feel the vibe. Yeah. But now we're walking on over to Graceland to go to this talk. I don't remember what it's called. I can look it up. It's okay. I'll put it in there. See you guys in Graceland. It's called A Conversation on Elvis, but it's with a whole bunch of different people. Check out her outfit. Do you like that? Oh, wow. Elvis nice. and Lisa. Let's see your shorts. Turn around. Very nice. Very nice. We can't forget the, the glasses. We can't forget to get my necklace in there. My new necklace. Of course, we've already showed you, but... Yep. It's pretty dang heavy. Um, so my mom actually copied me on the shorts. It was my idea. So check out my shorts. Do you see them? Thank you. But they're my patches that I bought though. My idea. Okay, let's go watch the show. And Lee Majors. <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's my wife. After oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, I was writing, I'm writing a memoir. Uh, I have been for the last two, three years, and I just suddenly finished Elvis's chapter about two months ago. So he's, a little bit of this is fresh on my mind, and I thought, well, to help me out, I'll just pull some excerpts from it and, and share them with you if I could. Yep. So uh, anyway, uh, when I was graduating from high school in 1957, that's where Elvis was here buying this, this mansion, which he finally named Graceland. I never thought that 10 years ago that I would be meeting him actually. But I met him in 1967 on the Four Star Studio lot where I was filming Big Valley and he was filming a movie called Clambay. And the producers of Clam, uh, Big Valley were producing his movie. So he was, uh, uh, Elvis was, was obviously a huge fan of the Big Valley, believe it or not. And he liked my character. And he said he wanted to meet me. And so, when well, they told me that, I said, well, yeah, I'd love to meet him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> movie where he was shooting, and he and uh, Shelley Fabre, uh, and they were in a swanky restaurant, and they were sitting at the bar, and that was his character. He was doing his best to woo this girl, you know, and so I was watching from the shadows, and uh, he didn't know I was there. And, uh, but I did see that the waiters, were, they were wearing... Uh, these little tassel hats with the little, you know, the Shriner hat kind of thing, and a little shiny vests and everything. So uh, when uh, they had finished rehearsing and went away to their trailers, uh, Arthur Nadell, the director, he came over to me and he said to me, he said, that's this, you want to do something with this? I said, sure. So I went back and I got into that outfit with the wardrobe people. They put me in a little whole outfit Went to the makeup lady, she put a mustache on me. <laughs> and then they, uh, when they came back, I was to slip in behind them as the waiter and clear a table. Like, they're here, and right back here. I mean, they directly behind them. Would you like to see that? <laughs> he, uh, we, did, we did that one take, and I was 
clearing the table, and I, was, and I, was, I turned over a glass, and I dropped some silverware and stuff. <laughs> they just kind of looked around, and, then, and Arthur, the director, says, uh, okay, let's reset and shoot it again. So take two, uh, same thing. I, I did a little bit more, knocked over something else. And uh, they still, they said, cut, and then they looked. Nothing happened. And Arthur said, all right, let's do it one more time. And um, so action, and I go in, and this time I, I, I really make a lot of, not a lot of I knocked over three or four glasses and picked up and dropped the whole damn tray. <laughs> and then he did turn around, both of them, and he looked at me, and then he realized who it was, and he just started laughing out loud like crazy. <laughs> The producer, directors, and the whole crew who was in on it, uh, naturally, uh, they, they had a lot of fun out of that. So, you know, he was over there, and he'd come out, and he had all these silk scarves around his neck. I'm sure you've seen it, if not in person, if, you know, in, the, in films and stuff of his show. And he would lean over into the audience, and the girls would swoon and take a scarf, take a scarf. And so, I got some scarves over there from Red. <laughs> I put them around my neck and I do a little, I do a little slow motion walk out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he kind of looks over and I'm leaning down and the girl's and he says, that's enough, Lee. This is my show. <laughs> this is my show, you know. My show. So I, I did a little slow motion bionic walk off. <laughs> said, welcome to the Memphis Mafia. And uh, I have it right here today. It's one of the favorite memories from uh, 50 years ago or more maybe. But uh, you know, all of his Memphis buddies, uh, he knew them well, he trusted them well. And I think when he welcomed me into that group, uh, I, I really, you know, uh, to me it was a big thing. I'll never forget that. Our, our, our final guest today is one that I've had such a great time with, and, and it's so wonderful to have her here and to hear Lee's words about Elvis's feelings about our next guest. And I think ours are the same. Linda Thompson. I hope you got to hear some of what Lee had to say about it. You know, I didn't, but he, um, he came back and told me that he was talking about when he was in the dressing room and Elvis was talking to me on the phone. Yeah. And, um, like the only place Elvis could go for privacy was to go in and the yeah. door was closed and the phone line was under yeah. the door. But how great is Lee Majors, oh. you guys? Isn't and a little known fact, he actually paid for my wedding with Bruce Jenner. He does want his money back. <laughs> but he paid for the wedding. <laughs> I don't think I'm kidding either. No, oh. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Find it as the spotlight hit this necklace. It's just, you know. I wore this for y'all. <laughs> I usually keep this in a safe deposit box as I do all the Elvis jewelry. You know, I, I'm, it's such a treasure for me. And the world is so crazy today. You know, I don't wear jewelry. Well, I lie. <laughs> These are the things I bought myself, though. But Elvis jewelry, I keep in a safe deposit box. But I thought the fans would like to see uh, my TLC that Elvis dubbed the mother of all TLCs. So the, the ones that he would put around the ladies' necks were beautiful and gold, but smaller. And he designed this and had this made specifically for me. It's got uh, baguette diamonds in the lightning bolt and round diamonds in the TLC, tender loving care. And he said, you know, you deserve this. You treat me so well with such tender loving care. So you get the mother of all TLCs. Aww. She's very sweet. Tell us. The, how did the official Linda Thompson way of TLC I'd like to take credit peanut. for it, but it's really the Elvis yeah. Presley way exactly. of creating a peanut butter and banana sandwich. You mash the bananas, it has to be a ripe banana, you mash it up, blend peanut butter in the mashed bananas, take two pieces of white bread, preferably, you know, Wonder Bread, and put the mixture in the bread, and then you melt a stick of butter, 
a stick. <laughs> Pretty much a stick is a lot, a lot of butter, and you saturate both sides of the bread and fry it like a toasted cheese, like a grilled cheese sandwich, but it's peanut butter and banana. And you know, honestly, I don't think I ever saw him eat a full one, but he just wanted to have a few bites. I told you this story yeah. last night about he would ask me to, uh, honey, would you go downstairs and make me some bacon and eggs? And I said, well, do you want Pauline or Lottie or somebody to do it? No, I want you to do it because it tastes better when you make it. And I said, okay, so of course I accommodated him. <laughs> Went down, and the first time I ever made uh, bacon and eggs for him, it was like three eggs, you know, and four slices of bacon. And I go back up with the tray and put it down on the bed in front of him, and he looks at it. He said, what is this? I said, it's your bacon and eggs. And he said, honey, I'm rich. <laughs> I used to be really poor and you know we didn't have a lot of food to eat and he said this looks like when I was poor and didn't have enough food to eat. He said I want you to go back down there and put at least six eggs together and a half a pound of bacon. I won't eat it all but I just want to see it in front of me. I just want to know I can afford that. <laughs> so I mean he still felt he had such a humility really and still felt in his heart that he remembered when he was poor and didn't have an, enough food and um, and wanted to remind himself now he did <laughs> that that sense of where he came from seemed to always still be with him and one of the things we that we found out in talking to Angie the you know heads of head of archives is that you know Vernon saved everything because he was uh, uh, through the depression it could go away yeah, absolutely. That stayed with Elvis. Either. Yeah, not as much with Elvis. Yeah. I mean, Elvis honestly didn't care about money. He didn't care about hoarding money. He had such a generous spirit. And he would often say, you know, I derive so much more pleasure from giving than receiving. He was a very difficult person to buy for, as you can imagine, because he had everything. And if he didn't have it, he could go out and buy it. Yeah. And, you know, he spent his money. God bless him. He lived for the day. You know, he, he lived the way we all are um, admonished to live. You know, t today is the present. This is the day we should grasp and rejoice in. You know, so he did live that way. But he derived incredible pleasure from giving um, and, and would much rather see someone's face having received a gift from him than for them to bring him a gift. You know? yeah, I Take it off, give it to you. You know, that's it. we called him Santa Claus because he had such a tremendous spirit of giving. He's yeah. an incredible person. So how do you buy for the man who can buy anything for himself? How do you select a gift for him? It was really difficult. You know, the one of the, the, the best gift that I was ever able to give Elvis was the Maltese cross. You guys have all seen that beautiful Maltese cross that he wore um, all the time in his shows. So it was Christmas time, our second Christmas together, and not knowing that Elvis never did anything for himself, you know, he would never indulge himself as much as he would indulge other people, I went to Lowell Hayes and I said, listen, I have this design, this beautiful Maltese cross I would love to have made for Elvis, Pave diamonds, um, my birthstone and his birthstone, turned sideways in a heart and joined by a single diamond with an eternity ring around those two hearts. Um, can you do this? And Lowell said, sure I can. So I went back home to Graceland and I said, honey, I want to buy you a nice Christmas present this year. But of course that means, of course, you'll pay for it. <laughs> but I want to do it for you. And he said, okay, sweetheart, well, how much, how much are we talking about? And I said, $25,000. He said, $25,000? And I said, now doesn't 8,000 sound better? <laughs> so ladies, remember that, if you're, <laughs> or gentlemen. So it, it made 8,000 a lot more palatable for him. And he said, he started laughing and he said, I see what you've done there. And he said, so honey, is it, is it 25 or is it eight? And I said, it's really, it's $8,000. He said, sweetheart, if you want to spend $8,000 on me for Christmas, please go ahead. So I got him the Maltese cross and he absolutely adored it and wore it to every show um, yeah. thereafter. Yeah. Love and admire and just little human touches like that. He always used Neutrogena soap, so he always had this little essence of uh, that clean, fresh smell of Neutrogena soap. Their sales are gonna go up, aren't they? <laughs> And Am I supposed to kiss and tell now? Not a, well, you can kiss and whisper. Um, 
Well, remember what Jerry Reed said. Jerry Reed said, you know, Elvis, I'm not that way, but man, I'd kiss you. I mean, you know, uh, kissing Elvis, you've come up with an explanation that perhaps well, it's could the help. closest, closest explanation that I could devise. And I wrote this in my memoir when I finally, finally wrote a memoir. I said, if you take two big fluffy marshmallows, put them together, and the sweetness and the softness that they are, and you just kiss those marshmallows, that's the closest thing that I could come to imagining that would be like kissing Elvis. Conversations on Elvis. Thoughts. Is really good. I thought very, yeah. very interesting. Very a lot of good people, a lot of knowledge, things, believe it or not, some things I did not know. Um, of course they end it with Linda Thompson, which I, I think she's great. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna comment and say they don't like her or they do, but everybody has their own opinion. Um, but no, six million dollar man, Lee Majors, pretty cool, said he doesn't know who he is, so we're gonna have to watch a couple of his shows. Um, the piano player. She didn't video all of it because you really can't put all of it in. It was what two and a half it hours was, long. No, three and a half hours yes, long. But it was it was worth it. Yeah, I mean, I think by far that was the best event that we have gone to so far. Um, right now, we are actually walking to go see Cody Slater, um, one of the other winners of the ETA. E T Elvis. E yeah, the Elvis inter yeah, tribute the tribute contest. And Whatever. Then another person and. Um, Anyways, but I mean, what I was trying to say was after that, we have the celebration of... Lisa Marie. Right. At five with Jerry so, Schilling and other guests. I yeah, Linda, Linda Thompson's Thompson. actually going to be at that one too. Right. I mean, there's um, so many other events that's going on that obviously we didn't go to because it gets pretty pricey. But um, there's different packages you could buy, which we should have bought because you can do like so many events for a certain price. I didn't think we were gonna buy this many, so when I went to buy one and then I added it and added it by that, I probably spent more than it would have been to do the package. So if you ever come, you might wanna look at that. Well, we had a bust. Yeah, we went in to see Cody Slater, which I've never seen. I've seen him on Facebook perform and stuff, and I know he's really good. But apparently he called at the last minute and said he had a family emergency and he couldn't come. So hopefully his family's fine, but so we sat in there and watched some other ones. Um, <laughs> Time okay. for Lisa Marie. Bye. There are so many people in this line. This is the longest line I've seen this whole entire time at Elvis Week. I think we want to start this, you know, we're at Graceland. Graceland is really the, you know, the, the center of the universe of everything Elvis. Uh, so why don't we talk about, you know, the things that we remember about her at Graceland? Well, you know, um, obviously the first thing I remember is uh, driving her home from the hospital. And Lisa was a very strong individual, as you know, even as a little girl, except when Elvis was around. They had a real chemistry. Um, I, 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 when I think of Lisa, one of the thoughts that come to my mind is we came off of a tour and she was like three years old or less and it was like uh, her mother brought her to the airport and we we're going down and I saw this <coughs> little kid running with crying she was to see her dad and they picked her up and I went oh my god now I know what a father-daughter relationship is but from the beginning to the end with all of the issues that she had in her life it was Graceland that really gave her strength and happiness hopefully everyone knows that uh, every dollar that we generate from this uh, from this to you know from this today is going to charity it's going to go to both Memphis area charities as well as uh, as well as the Red Cross of Maui. that I was given uh, that we've raised today is $34,450. But in Lisa's name, I'm going to match that. Wow. So, we raised almost $70,000.
you know, Lisa was only four and a half when I first met her, and cognizant memory doesn't really kick in until you're about four and a half, five years old. The things, if you look back on your life, you don't remember much until then. So I think that all of her memories of Christmas when she was a little girl with her daddy um, definitely included me. So I played Santa Claus to her. <laughs> I played the Easter Bunny for her. And um, I, I just, I loved her so dearly. She was the sweetest little girl. You know, um, I know that I've seen interviews since where she says she was a little hellion and she was, a, you know, a terror at Graceland. I never experienced that. For me, she was like a little blonde cherub, you know, a little angel. Um, she was always very loving. Elvis loved her immeasurably and showed that love. He demonstrated that love to her just very generously. You know, he, we called her little goober nickel. We had all these little pet names for her. And, you know, he was very attentive and very tuned into her. And um, you, you were talking about how much Riley looks like Lisa on, on certain angles and how much Lisa looked like her daddy. I'll tell you a funny story. She was at um, my birthday party one year, and she said, Linda, come to the restroom with me, as women do. You know, I said, okay, so I'm in the restroom with her, and we're talking, and we're in close proximity to each other, and I'm looking at her eyes, and I said, okay, Lisa, you're either gonna have to kiss me on the lips, or we gotta get out of here. You, you look so much like your daddy right now. It was like looking into Elvis's eyes when I looked into her eyes. So she went, ew. <laughs> And we laughed and went back to my birthday party. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that I got to share so many incredible times with her and, more importantly, so much love. It occurs to me that the only thing we really take with us when we go is love. And the only thing we leave of real, true value is love when we, when we go. So and she's left that here. All of you are here because you loved her, you loved her daddy. We're here because we love her and love her daddy. So it's, it's, um, it's kind of comforting to know that the love still lives on. You know, the body may be gone, but the love is forever. She passed away and they were trying to figure out what to do with her, all of her things. Uh, Riley made the one phone call um, to Graceland, uh, and that call was obviously and only to Angie. Uh, and so throughout her life, uh, she knew that all of her things belonged here. They had always belonged here. They were always going to be here. Uh, so uh, it's important that we honor her with those wishes, uh, that we expand on what, we, what we've been doing, uh, because she never wanted it to be too big, she never wanted it to be about herself, so we're just gonna stretch that a little bit. So Angie, let's talk about the future of Lisa's exhibitions. So um, we've talked about it since her passing of what we can do here. Um, that exhibit that we just saw a video of, I can remember when I first came up with that concept and I approached her about it, and her reply was, no one wants to see an exhibit about me. To look at her life, but her dad's life through her eyes, what she saw, what she remembered. And that kind of got her over the hump and allowed us to put that amazing exhibit together. We're gonna be expanding on that idea in the same space. Um, we're gonna make it twice its size and we're going to include lots of things that we have not only in the archives, but things that are currently in LA that will be making their way back here. Celebrations of Lisa Marie was really good, but it was just really sad, um, of course, as it would be um, with everything that happened. But it was a good, it was a good talk, and um, we got to listen to a couple songs or a song that she recorded that had never been released and probably will never be released. So that was cool. She got to sing with her dad. Um, but now we're going to change and head over to the candlelight vigil line because it's already ridiculously long. Check out the fit. Heck yeah. She's got the Elvis jumpsuit on. It's really my pajama shirt to my Elvis pajamas, but it works. It's cold out and I don't have a jacket. Sorry. Where are we going? Candlelight vigil. First time ever. So it's on my bucket list. So this should be interesting. They say it's not going to be that busy this year. 
because it's only really busy like on like 40th, 45th, 50th, like right. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, but we'll see. Anyway, we'll see. Welcome to the 2023 Candlelight Vigil. I am Argo from Elvis Radio. It's a pleasure for me to introduce to you now the managing partner of Graceland, Mr. Joel Lockshaker. Thank you all for coming. I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? Woo! Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, uh, this is really a, a bittersweet night for myself, and I'm sure for a lot of other people. Because, uh, obviously, for many, many years, y'all have been coming uh, to visit with Elvis and to, uh, you know, tell him what you think and tell him what you, how, how important he was. Uh, and today, um, we really have to add Lisa to that. Uh, and, you know, Lisa has always been Elvis' protector, even when she was a small, small child. Uh, until Elvis was up, she was really in charge, and she was always making sure that nobody woke her dad up and that everything was fine and good. Um, she really, you know, from the, from the moment that I met her, uh, the only thing that was important to her was Graceland uh, and her dad's legacy. Uh, and many of the things that you see now, you know, I couldn't have done without her. Uh, and many of the things that you're going to see in the next five to ten years at Graceland uh, will be with her. Uh, we, you know, she was, in everything that we did, uh, she was thinking about it, talking about it. If she didn't think it was the right idea, we didn't do it. When I didn't have a clear indication of what Elvis wanted, uh, I usually got that from Lisa. So, um, you know what, you know, obviously we're always respectful here. Uh, make sure you walk by Lisa as well. Uh, give her your love. Uh, she is most certainly and definitely here. I promise you that. Uh, and just, you know, I wish everybody a good night. Be safe uh, and, and do what you need to do. Thank you. Candlelight Vigil is officially over. It took us... Well, over for us. Two hours in line. Um... It was a long wait, but it was it was a cool experience. Yeah. I mean, it stays till 2 o'clock in the morning. We just decided to go at 8.30 when it started. So um, there's people that's going to be in line for quite a while. But, no, it was cool to see all those people. They played music, and people are sitting out there and um, with all the candles lit going up the driveway and standing and going. It was, it was cool. It was on my bucket list. I wanted to do it. Yeah, so it, it was cool. A lot of people. It's amazing how many still do it year after year after year. Yeah, this was the 45th annual candlelight vigil service. And the same Elvis fan country club puts it on every year. So this was their 45th year doing it. Yeah, um, they sponsor it somehow, probably the candles, things like that. I mean, they had water set up for you to drink along the way because usually it's extremely hot. We had beautiful weather. What was it, maybe... 70 degrees 68 yeah and the crazy part was is my mom saw a shooting star and then we saw these weird things in the sky and everybody was looking at them and then i saw a shooting star so there was just like a lot yeah that was i, yeah. I don't know Cause I, was, I have not seen a shooting star in a long time so it was kind of i think when i told her i saw one like a while earlier she kind of thought i was like what and then she's telling me that and then we looked up and then she saw one so that, yeah that was cool Thank you guys for coming along on this venture. The candlelight vigil was beautiful and such a cool experience. We love you, Elvis. We love you, Lisa. One more Elvis vlog left. See you guys on the next venture.